The internationally significant Awarua wetlands have been under the spotlight as concerns rise over the health of the catchment, particularly in the Waituna Lagoon. Local sheep and beef farmer Ray McCrosty was among the first to bring the issue to the attention of the local council. An action group was formed and they've been working with the Department of Conservation on trying to fix the problem. I pride myself on being relatively observant and this really got past me completely in the respect that I saw it happening but I didn't join the dots. Firstly, I guess the fish started slowly to disappear uh, and, and what the fish that were there you couldn't see for the weed. And the children who were playing in the creek were coming inside complaining of a greasy oily residue on them and, and uh, you could um, you could sometimes you know, effectively smell them and you you just had to say well, look you better go and have a share and, I, and you know it amazes me that we never connected the dots and I probably never would have either until we received a submission in the mail from the then regional council about a neighbour who was wanting to enlarge his settling pond. I had no objection and not only that I felt that what my neighbour was doing on his property was his business and I basically wrote that on the piece of paper and, uh, and at the bottom in the little area for comments I asked the question of the then regional council. The Waituna Creek by my observation is running white or uh, you know a cloudy creamy colour night and morning coinciding with milking times. Is there anyone in the office that explain to me why that is happening? The proverbial I guess hit the fan and, and there was a lot of uh, Activity, people with test tubes, they, I understand they tested the water, I was never told, but they f found that the creek was polluted to its maximum level. Farmers being farmers started asking the questions, well, what was different from today as to yesterday? How did all this happen? And me being me, I wrote you know, in a submission that asked why the creek was running white. And f funnily enough, all of a sudden it was my fault. It was at that point that I realised that possibly there could be a, a bit of a problem with the environment here and I uh, got a rather a brutal awakening to the emotive and irrational thinking that the whole environmental subject uh, generates in people. Doc were asking for people to register an interest in the AWAG group and I just thought to myself that probably for the first time in 40 odd years someone had figured out that it was reasonably bright to engage farmers who are actually farming around or on or managing to the best of their ability the Waituna Creek. There is farmers, there is DOC, there is Environment South and South and District Council, Fonterra, people from re representative of all kinds of organisations and we've all sat down and got over our differences and done something. Waituna catchment is a reasonably large catchment that flows into the Arua wetlands and it's made up of about 80% dairy farms and the remaining sheep and beef farms. The regional council have been collecting water quality data here for the last 10 years so in the life of the wetland and the catchment that's a very short period of time but the trends in water quality have generally been downwards over that period of time. I guess I would say that it's everyone's responsibility water quality, whether we live and work on a farm or not, and we all make choices in regards to land use. AWAG stands for the Aurora Waituna Advisory Group. I think it's great, it's, it's opened up a corridor of communication. We often want the same things for very different reasons and it's meant that we've had to really understand each other and realise we are actually wanting the same things often from very different perspectives. One of the first projects was riparian fencing, so subsidising riparian fencing and fully subsidising riparian planting uh, to get that protection, immediate protection of the creeks. We've also been realigning culverts that sit above creeks so that fish can move more freely around. The actual science changes, the, the physical changes are not that obvious at the moment, but it's the changes in people's attitudes, the embracing the fencing and things like that that are actually really important.
through the Nature Heritage Fund who purchased this land, it was gifted to DOC and um, the agreement was that it was to be restored to a wetland. And so because that's a very large process and takes a fair bit of time and could potentially require a lot of money if we were to plant the whole area, we've taken a more conservative approach. We realise there's still really good farmland available here. So we've leased that farmland to um, a neighbouring cocky who's uh, who's working the land for sheep farming mainly um, and where we can we're planting out areas um, for in, in native wetland plants and letting it naturally regenerate where we can as well. <coughs> This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.